What is good? We're back. And we got week one about to hit you with some player values, some winners, some losers, maybe even some moves you could make. Who knows? Who knows? I don't want to get crazy here on talking about week one. We got uh, we got Big Co. not in the studio. Didn't get the memo. Sorry, like boss. Marty. What's that? I said, sorry, boss. The boss is <laughs> really <laughs> riding me. Week one's in the books. And like Marty Huggins says, bring your brooms because it's a mess. But we do this every week one, right? We act surprised that it was overwhelmingly ugly and then we overreact. So the first thing that we need to do, like Aaron Rodgers said, is relax. Some of y'all might have just drafted bad teams. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for real, so much of what we see in week one is, is at least in some form a lie. When we look back five weeks from now, things are going to be so different. Like last year, Puka Nakua was real. Christian Kirk's usage in week one and being droppable was not. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we're going to sift through some things. We're going to look at players and, and how they were used and try to figure that stuff out. And we, and we need we need to look at that stuff, but we can't look at it as the gospel. Right. We have to use some context and some common sense. And then we have to figure out what coaches position groups are working and kind of take it from there and not base it solely on one thing or the other. You know, we have no preseason these days. And I think that's kind of why you see some of these bad starts that we've been seeing over the years here there's no live bullets no live action we got a great stat from rich rebar here heading into the monday night football game 189 six passing yards from per team is the fewest in the nfl in week one of the season since the 2000s and 121.3 rushing yards per team is the most in week one in a season since 2008 and the second highest in the 2000s now obviously i think that is from the preseason not playing it's week one you're figuring a lot of things out Two, maybe the rushing yards kind of thing is we've been in a transition phase for a long time of defenses getting lighter, linebackers getting lighter, everybody yeah. getting lighter. Hey, it's week one. Let's let's run the ball a little bit here. Week one, try to take advantage of that a little bit. So skinny, skinny uh, linebackers for sure. Right. Week one, everybody's all in a bunch here. We got our feathers in a bunch. Everybody's all riled up. It's a dynasty show. So in, in season, you're going to treat it a little bit more like redraft that you're going to want to try to win your league. Of course, I've, there might be a couple of teams, you know, tanking and having the fun with that. But everybody wants to win for the most part. But what we need to do is make sure that we don't make long term decisions based on short term problems. Right. So that that is one of those things where we just got started. Like you said, last year, Christian Kirk didn't get any targets week one. And then he had a nice little stretch there before he got hurt this year. You got. Atlanta Falcons offense struggles, et cetera, et cetera. There's all kind of problems that you could have that would be short-term problems, and you don't want to make drastic long-term decisions for your dynasty team is what is my overarching theme right this minute after week one. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at the primetime games that just took place, right? And you have basically eight right now because Sam Fran and, and the Jets are hopeful if they have some quarterback play, which it looks like they do. They're, they're, they should they would have been in the playoffs the last few years if they had playoff because if they had a quarterback because they have good defense. So you have like eight teams that are playing in, in the primetime games that all have quarterback play that is, hasn't really changed and head coaches that haven't really changed. Some of those teams have changed some coordinators through there. But, you know, you start off Chiefs, Ravens, Super Bowl favorites, potentially. Then you went Packers, Eagles, Packers, Eagles. Eagles change OCs. They needed it. You know, you saw in that offense, it was stale. Kellen Moore comes in, employed motion in 48 out of 73 plays against Green Bay, an aggressive 65.8, making it the highest usage in a single game since 2020. I've grabbed that tweet from somewhere. So pardon me for not giving credit to who said that, but much more motion, which is where the league is. You need to be running motion in a lot of things. And, and it showed their Eagles offense looked a lot more uh, innovative and, and not stale, right? Then you have... Uh, Niners Jets playing right now and then you had last night you had Lions Rams so good coaches good quarterbacks you don't really have a ton of terrible play there you had you had some good games but a lot of the other teams there's so much turnover so much changes the Atlanta Falcons everything is different with Atlanta right the coach is different the OC is different the DC is different the quarterback's different. They drafted another quarterback. Neither one of those guys played at all in the offseason, really. Kirk's coming from, a, you know, so 
Atlanta is the one we're focusing on right now because that's the one where there's some elite fantasy assets that everybody's panicking. Hey, we got there's three or four guys here, and and but like just and it's it might not get any better, right? Atlanta's got two or three uh, matchups here with the Eagles and and Chiefs coming in that that echo chamber might get a little louder. Like maybe Kirk shouldn't even be out there right now, but that would pose even maybe a bigger problem in a genie they couldn't put back in the bottle, right? Um, so yeah, well said there. Just want to kind of point that out that hey, some of the some of the better teams without a whole bunch of turnover and some good quarterback and coaching went out there and put up good stats and good numbers. And, and hey, I'm in Ross St. Brown didn't come through for you, right? Puka got hurt for you, you know that. But it's going to be okay. Every week one, you deal with some some wonky stats, some guys doing well that you didn't expect to do well, and and some of it's real and some of it isn't. But just. For you, you got to relax. I think the best thing you can, the, the best thing said is, is don't make long term decisions based off short term problems. And, and that's what a lot of people want to come and say, oh my God, I have so many problems right now. Like, we just got to relax, man, right? Of course, that specifically came from one of our patrons asking. He said, hey, I got uh, Kyle Pitts and I got Drake London and I got Bijan Robinson on the same team. Should I be looking to trade one of them right now? And that's a re- week one reaction. That's an instant knee jerk. And just like you, that's why we're talking about the Falcons in this exact scenario, because, yes, the Falcons ran into a Steelers defensive line that has a healthy, fresh J.J. Watt or T.J. Yeah. Watt. And that's 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 never a good thing to run into. And a 36-year-old quarterback coming off of a Achilles tear that had no live reps, no live action, mm-hmm. like a brand his his first time with that center, his first time with that offensive line, his first time with those receivers, etc. And and so now you got Drake London is an absolute you know stud young player. Bijan got his, he got five catches, so that's going to help him keep 16 points on the board. And then Kyle Pitts, they're all young dynasty assets. You wouldn't want to be watering your team down. What do you if you trading Drake London? You trading down? You know, right. you get you going down. So I'm, I'll, I don't want to trade. You can't trade Drake London today. Like mm-hmm. you know, that's not how this works. In in the best case scenario, you never want to trade your guys after a down week. You always want to trade after a up week. You know, so I mean, you got to make plans as as things change. But and like you said, the Niners. I mean, the Falcons have the Eagles and the Chiefs coming in the next two weeks. Eagles defense, not as good as it once was, but they still got some pressure and they got Jalen Carter. When he decides to be full, full throttle, he he's unstoppable. And then of course you got the chiefs coming in with a absolute loaded roster and, and you know, and even a, a defense is probably better as a whole of course. They lost a good cornerback, but right. But there you know, that, that, a lot that, of, a lot of young pieces that, that are getting better. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that, that no, it's not going to get any better for the next two weeks for the Falcons theoretically now they did get a punt back they got the ball back with three minutes to go and they could have won the game you know so like they they, the Steelers punt them the ball back up five with three minutes to go and if the Falcons go down and somehow win the game the narrative's completely different they struggled a little bit out the gate Kirk 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 saves the day and now there's light at the end of the tunnel right yeah so tough sledding for the next two weeks for the Falcons for sure and then it'll lighten up uh just be prepared for that right and don't you know of course no do I want my team to be 0 and three absolutely not but I'm not going to go trading away uh some uh, you know elite dynasty assets uh on a you know just to help myself yeah be one and one versus 0 and two in dynasty if this was redraft yeah I'd trade Drake London right now if I needed to <laughs> yeah that's a completely know? different ball game right but you yeah. know what what you you know what you kind of want to be doing here like look the first move to make is don't make any moves at all or don't 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 make any moves at all. Right. Just relax. Take it all in. Don't don't do anything crazy. Don't don't get all well willy nilly here. It's perfect. Make it. No move is making it. That is a move. Yeah. Right. It is. Patience is a virtue. That's Sometimes been a saying that, that people didn't get done. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. But, you know, exactly. listen, if, if you're a rebuilder and you know things were shitty and 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 hey, this is a time that you can be trying to pounce on some of these guys. Hey, Cooper Cup just came out, got 20 targets. Right. What exactly. you, you want to be trying to go trade Cooper Cup for a guy who might be panicking with Drake London of saying, oh, my God, Drake London. I, I knew this, you know, there's ever the pessimist guy in your league. He's there. I knew Drake London wasn't going to be any good. I, I don't know why I listen to you guys. And and now, mm-hmm. while well, Cooper Cup just got 20. My, my team might be OK. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll trade you. Yeah, let, let me do that. So if you're the if you're the rebuilder and you're coming into it, knowing that and you can make that move even if you're not and you can make that move it's probably the right move in the end 
um, to, to oh, get the, the much younger asset that, that should be really good. We saw, I think Drake London saw like his lowest target share of maybe the entire time he's been in Atlanta, right? That's not going to continue. They're going to figure that out. There, there's a whole list of guys here that we'll eventually talk about that, you know, are good, probably going to, what's the old adage? Uh, the the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease. There's going to be a bunch mm -hmm. of that going on next week, right? Uh, that's a that's a great way to tie those two things together right there by just bringing in, of course, Cooper Cup exploded. And if you're a rebuilding team and good for you for not trading Cooper Cup while he was injured and you went. And so now, I mean, if you have a chance, if you really, really truthfully can win the championship, probably not a good time to trade away Cooper Cup because you could ride this thing out and he could really help you with that production, and especially Puka's on the IR. He's going to crush it for, you know, as long as he's healthy, he's going to crush it. But if you really can't win. Drake London, in this scenario, that's a great call to put those two guys together. You probably have to add something to Cooper Cup still. Even if you can, can win, you if you could make that deal, I'd be I'd be almost uh, obliged to do so. Obviously, at the end of the day, you want to win some money, right? But, you know, I, I, value-wise, it's a good deal, right? Hit us in the comment section. That's a fantastic people, deal. People don't like Drake London. It's He's had his time to shine, and he hasn't done anything. And now week one's in the books, and that's hey. a, that's a wrap. Hey, you finally got a quarterback. What happened? Three targets. Come yeah, on. we got another guy on the list that's, uh, you know, got similar. Ne never, never made it quite as high, but we'll, we'll talk to him. All right, big go. Let's keep it moving here. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure let's get into the first kind of winner of the week let's and let's see what his trade value is and, and we're going to talk about him isaiah likely obviously came in here 12 targets nine receptions 111 yards almost had 10 for two touchdowns and uh maybe 10 more yards so 10 for 120 and two um right on a huge day from isaiah likely uh now you know andrews came in with 59 snaps likely came in 53 snaps ravens used 12 personnel uh, with 52.7% of their plays against the Chiefs. That's more than any game last season, according to Next Gen Stats. Is likely going to do this every week? Absolutely not. Mark, Mark Andrews was in a car wreck and hasn't been playing all that, practicing all that much, right? So, so you have to look at that a little bit of, of saying, all right, is this, is this going to be sustainable? No, probably not. Is Andrews going to go back to where, you know, being a, a, a good player? Probably so, right? It's not going to be two and and 12 between two targets to yeah. 12 targets you know that, that thing's going to balance out but what you have to take away from this is likely is going to be on the field a lot right a ton They're, they don't have first of all you at the end of last season you can't put that genie back in the bottle right likely right. came out and, and played well you didn't add anybody that that can make any bit of a difference you added tez walker we'll see uh but you know bateman's yeah. not really it Flowers is is really good, but that's one. So now you have Andrews and Likely, and Likely can do so many wide receiver things, and Andrews can as well. You can use them in, in different versions and, and line them up in different spots. But listen, if Likely was coming out here and getting 12 targets, 9 receptions, and 111 yards and a touchdown, he's fucking tight end one. That's you know, that's not one. what we're talking about here. I know some people are like, oh, no. this, is, it, this is, don't worry about Likely. This is stupid. Don't do anything. But likely is going to be a factor for the Ravens because he needs to be a factor for the Ravens. They found gold. Yeah. This is awesome for them. You know. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah, you you hit me with some good stuff, so I'll try to make this quick. I found a really good beat writer for the for the Ravens, and the reason that Bateman isn't it is because Bateman's a really really good route runner, and he plays inside a structure, and and Lamar does not. He's the complete opposite. So those two things don't go together. The Ravens, the 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 organization, they just paid. Bateman, they talk him up. They say he's going to have a great year. He physically cannot have a great year with Lamar because those two guys are the opposite of how they play together. Zay, Zay Flowers, quick screens, get him to ball, get out there, play some uh, against some uh, zone coverage, find a hole, get him to ball. Zay Flowers is a stud, and Rashad Bateman is a really, really good receiver, but he doesn't mesh well. He'll get some go balls here and there. Yeah. He'll probably hit a crossing route or something here or a, a nice post play here once in a while with Lamar, and it'll look good, but it's because the defense had forgotten about him. He's not going to be a priority. The, right. Your best thing that you said uh, on Thursday night, while likely was blowing up, and I was sitting there victory lapping in my in my man cave here and just fist pumping myself all night long. Andrews got in a car wreck, you know. Right. So Andrews is out there running routes. So two things: Andrews running routes, gassed, completely about to fall over because sure. he had you know just He's coming back shape. from not in shape. Been and then the Chiefs double teamed him all over the place. Yeah. 
So that Andrews doesn't doesn't do well against the Chiefs because they just like, well, we're smart enough to take away the the guy that that does well with Lamar. Lamar's favorite Tiny, target. We're going to take him away. Yeah. Right. Right. So and now and pair all that up with a, the worst offensive line that Lamar's had to play with. Right. And now you got this little the RB two on the line chipping and sliding off to the sideline here for the drop down for basically like a, a run and play extended, you know, RIP Derrick Henry game script. So chuck it to the sideline over there to Isaiah Likely, and he's making men miss and running for 40 yards. Yeah. Like you said, you can't put the genie back in the bottle because he looked so good last year. Well, this year looks even better. Yeah. He told us a couple of weeks ago in an interview, he said, they want me all over the place and they want to, they want me to act like the wide receiver too. Man, Isaiah Likely is the wide re- wide receiver too on this team. Yes. Yes, and, and and you should be you should be priority fabbing him. If you're t- if it's a regular PPR league and there's no premium, I would still have a nice chunk of PPR of a fab on likely if you don't have a stud tight end. And even if you do, why don't you want other people to get one? Yeah, right. So because if you think Lamar Jackson is going to throw the ball a ton and he's going to throw it to Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, and Isaiah Likely. Yeah, and he's going to check it down to to Justice Hill and or whoever else that gets healthy. And especially the way they're going to use Derrick Henry. When Derrick Henry's in there, they're going to have two tight ends, and they're going to use, have likely out to the side. They're going to have him off the line of scrimmage plenty of times. And it's because of the way football works, you cannot run the ball with Derrick Henry every time he's in the game. Right. That's not how it works because the defense will just right. well, sell out. If if yeah, you know they got in an unfortunate circumstance where that's what was kind of going on there, and and you got you can't have that going on. You have to be doing something different. But Isaiah likely is not going to have. The type of target sh- the target share that he just had, twenty nine percent, I believe. Uh, well, no, like you said, he'd be tight end one. He'd be right. the best tight end in the league. The run after catch ability is what these guys, these stat guys, look for. Yeah, that's why everybody was pumping up Senate because he could run after the catch. Yeah. Isaiah likely just showed you how ridiculously good he is with the ball in his hands. How good he is catching a ball in the end zone over people. You know, like what else can you ask for? Sure, he's not the, maybe he's not the best. You know professional tight end on his team right now because Mark Andrews is a stud. But this dude, he's the next Mark Andrews. Yeah. Right. No, and and, and you're also we, we just saw that the the offensive line will continue to get better. Um they lost some pieces there and they had some injuries. Being in the 12 personnel is almost going to be necessary for them to operate mm-hmm. anyway. And they, had, they, and they need to, they exactly. want to be in there anyway because they, they told you all off season that this is what they wanted to do as well. So it's not a surprise yeah. right. that, that this is. And he had his little screen as a starting lineup member. Right. Like they had both tight ends listed. You know, there you to go. Start off exactly, the game, Jay. You know. The only people that surprised here are, are us. It's not the Ravens. The Ravens are not surprised at all that likely got this got that type of work. Yeah. Wow. That's all we need to understand. That's all we need to understand is the Ravens were prepared for this. Just like you said, Jay, that's a perfect call. Like the, he's in the starting lineup. Shout out to his the face is on the screen. Coastal Carolina. Yeah. And y'all are welcome. I mean, yeah, oh. we've been all over Likely's dick for y'all are welcome. Uh, months and months and months. More Can't pick 12, him up so. if you already got him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, let's look at some trades boy. real quick for Likely and get on to the next player here. Uh, just to, to see where the value is. You know, I'm not saying do anything crazy and trade for do anything crazy for Isaiah Likely, but I think this is, is going to be a, 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 a you know, a stalwart of the of the Ravens lineup for years to come here. Twenty five first, and you know, or th- likely it's also Andrews is coming from the, what he said that was the hardest injury he's ever come back from the fibula, uh, as well. Like he's coming back from a from a bad injury too and a car wreck. So uh, put those things together, Andrews is going to be just fine, but likely isn't going anywhere. It's not going to be like this because that would be ridiculous. But so likely for a first and ha- and tight end premium. What do you think about that, Big Co? I mean, no context behind that first, but like you said, dude, in Dynasty, why wouldn't you want Likely on your team? Yeah, it's so it's that, very hard for me to say. It's, it's hard for me to say to give a first round pick for Likely because I've paid so many much cheaper prices for him. So but cheap. if, but yes, I mean, I would I would give you a late first for Likely right now in tight end premium. And dude, this is a, he's a perfect player for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and this and this and that particular trade, it looks like it's half point PPR and tight end premium, so you're getting double points on on tight end catches, so all day long. Um, yeah, I, CD Lamb, Isaiah Likely, that's that, that's, that's a, silly a bit aggressive. Trade. Senate and Sam oh, Donald, two quarterback all day, all day. Um, mm-hmm. Tight end premium, J.K. Dobbins in a two or Likely sure. half point likely. PPR, Likely. 
Yeah. Uh, it's good for J.K. Dobbins. I talked about him last night on the Patreon. Like, I love the fact that he's healthy enough to even be playing in the league still. Great kid. Yeah. Great Important. interview after the game. Ridiculously good interview after the game. And that kind of shows you why he keeps coming back. His head is in the right spot. But yeah, I'm taking likely in Dynasty all day long. Good plug for uh, every Sunday. We're doing a Patreon show. Hour, 9 o'clock, 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard for the patrons. Come check it out. We did our first one last last or uh, yesterday. And we're going to be doing it every, every Sunday. A uh, little hour-long recap live show with the patrons. Um, Finally got an extra show a week on the Patreons. <laughs> Come on over. Isaiah Likely and uh, for Shakir in a second full point PPR tight end premium apps of freaking lootly 2016 uh, or uh, 2016 2026 first uh, for for Isaiah Likely. I'm not upset about it. Sure, I'm not upset. No. About Bryce it. Young, Bryce Young probably can't get Isaiah oh. Likely with Bryce Young at this. No point. way. You you stole Likely. Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, the value is good on likely. It, it will likely cool a little bit here um, as as Andrews come back. But I mean, it's probably if, not the week to buy him. It's probably not the week to buy him. But we wanted to show you where the value was. I mean, Hollywood and Scary Terry for Chuba and likely uh, two quarterback full point PPR. You know that that one's a little harder to swallow. So yeah, I mean, you gave away two starting wide receivers, but yeah, that that is that's a and lot. It's not but not premium either. Shout out to the Dynasty Daddy. Good yeah. little database there. All got right. Some stuff in the works coming with him as well. So we Keep got, it moving, Case. We got some we got some trades there. We got some value of where where likely is. Maybe not the best time to trade, but Fab, why not? Load it up, baby. How many how many of these are you gonna get a year in Fab? Not very many. Especially right. if it's not there's no way he's sitting out there in a lot of dynasties. Mm -mm. You know, your redraft, I mean load it up. All right. Eagles offense, like we said, came out, played really well. You know, Hertz was a little up and down, but in general, you saw A.J. Brown crush, Devonta Smith crush, and you saw the new addition, Saquon Barkley crush. 24 carries, 109 yards, two touchdowns, two receptions, 23 yards, an additional touchdown in the air. Bow, 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 bow. And there was, I went on shows this offseason, and people were saying stupid for buying into Saquon Barkley because Jalen Hurts is going to take all of his production. Man, I just, I wasn't buying into that. And, hey, there's plenty of things I'm wrong on, but Saquon Barkley was not one of them. And he's he's a huge winner from week one, much like likely Eagles are tickled right now with their situation. Barkley's tickled with his situation. Mm. He's like, holy sure. shit, everybody who said Barkley's washed, and, and we're so quick to say washed on every fucking body as soon as they're not producing. Barkley's just been hurting on a bad team. Barkley got on a good team yeah. where they're not all focused on Saquon Barkley, and look at how much fun that was to watch Saquon Barkley operate week one against the Packers, right? Yeah, I mean, the Eagles offense is ridiculous with those two wide receivers, and then they get Dotson for nothing, and they got Goddard and a good offensive line. Like you said, it's, it's, this is a, that was the easiest running and easiest game that Barkley's ever had to play. Right. And, you know, uh, that, and it was on a sloppy, nasty field in Brazil. Right. Right. So it, that was, uh, that was nice. Yeah, so I, I good think for Barkley. I think happy Barclays, for the Eagles, happy for Barkley. Barkley's a huge winner. You know, Eagles get tougher to, to deal with. Barkley's one of the only guys out there, maybe two or three other guys that can give you CMC like upside. And the Eagles just got themselves a CMC like player here. When when Barkley's yeah, right like and Barkley's operating, he can do he can operate in the pass. He can operate and they, and they got Kellen Moore. They're they they're employing more option um or uh, more motion in, in what they're doing. Uh, yeah, will will sometimes Jalen Hurts vulture a touchdown from Saquon Barkley? Absolutely. Uh, but I think it was also silly to just assume that we're going to bring in this great running back and then we're also going to be continuing to just put our franchise quarterback who we just paid a ton of money in jeopardy of smashing. You know, there's only one of those guys in the league who has to do that, and it's Josh Allen <laughs> because he just he can't quit. Um, right. Right. And and he needed to. He needed to don't this give him week. Very many weapons. Either. Uh, right, right. Uh, so this is a bit different of a situation, I think. And, and and Barkley, I think, you know, had almost as many carries inside the red zone here this year as he did probably all of last year. I don't know exact exactly what the number was, but it wasn't great. Um, so now you're you're getting big time opportunities and and easy receptions, easy checkdowns. Jalen Hurts needs to learn how to just, hey, we don't have to put as much wear and tear on Jalen. Jalen was banged up last year. That knee was a problem for a chunk of the season. Hey, make this easier on you. Take a, take a, take a couple of little check downs to, to Barkley and let him do the work. Um, so that the Eagles well, I think you saw that. Well, I think you saw that Jalen Hurts didn't run the ball until the fourth quarter. Right. Well, um, they had to have. So it. Now, I, 
Right, exactly. So I like that out of Jalen Hurts to do that. And like you said, I mean, things just, yeah, things are so much easier for Barkley. And I mean, uh, for the rest of the season, you know, Barkley just wheels up. If you've been holding Barkley and you're a rebuilder, I, I, I got a rebuilder and I sold him in the draft. If you're a rebuilder, this is you just got a gift here that you can sell Barkley. Somebody's going to be very, very interested in Saquon Barkley here. Oh, for sure. Let's look at some deals that have gone down here for Saquon. Saquon Barkley for Garrett Wilson, one quarterback. That's that's steep. That's a that's a great get for that's, Garrett that's Wilson. That's before uh, they saw their game tonight, I guess. I guess so. Somebody was down on Garrett Wilson. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. Saquon yeah, Barkley good. for Rashad White and Brian Thomas. I'm taking Saquon. Easy. Um, Saquon for a first and a second. Saquon for Rashad White and Brian Thomas, and you take Saquon easy? Yeah. And Dynasty? Mm-hmm. You get Rashad White and Brian Thomas? No, I'll yeah. take the Rashad White, Brian Thomas side. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm Bri- I, I, Brian Thomas. We think it's going to be good. And Rashad White, I think we're going the opposite direction of where you want to be going. I don't disagree, but he's still there. got it. Was a, I, I don't disagree. The, uh, the, uh, and look, I'm not buying Saquon was, Barkley if I'm not competing. So I'm buying Saquon I know, Barkley I know, but let's. I know, but the, the running game was non-existent on Sunday for the Bucks, and, and Rashad White still had 16 points. It, was, and it wasn't Thomas, non-existent. The other guy was just getting it. It was very uh, got one good, for the other guy. He had 67 lucky, yards. Yeah, what happened? Most of it was on one good run in it's the fourth what, quarter. So what are we going to do? We're going to take, take away all the good runs. Rashad White's a great pass catcher, right? Six for six, yeah. 60 yards. That's what he's always been good at. Uh, not a but great I'm, runner between the tackles. That's fine. I'll take Rashad White and Brian Thomas for Barkley and and be good with that. Yeah, if I'm competing right now, I mean, it's Saquon Barkley. You Barclay, just you just got you just you, uh, you you got one game out of Saquon. They just blew up, and he's amazing. And you just draft it like if there was a startup this year, Barkley what went a round and a half in front of Rashad White, Barclay and now was going in the fourth a, round. Rashad White was going in the seventh. That's three rounds. Mm, That's what, so exactly what you, our ADP you says. Could get, but you could get a free time. The same thing. Get, seventh so, round. So, so two get, seventh round. Would you trade two seventh rounders for a fourth round pick and a startup? Most likely, yeah. Okay. That's what you're doing. I mean, Brian Thomas well, if one up. of them's... Yeah. Brian Thomas is certainly going up. Brian Thomas is the best part of this deal. I don't really want Rashad White oh. in this deal. But you get the running back back. It's not the worst. You're rebuilding. I like that side. If I'm it competing, just not, like y'all said it's just... I'll take, I'll take the other side. Y'all said it was easy. I disagree. All right. Barkley for a first and a second. Saquon, Nico for Tank Dell and Bijan. I'll take the Bijan, Tank Dell side on that one. Um, That's a lot of names. I, I didn't. I didn't comprehend that trade. Yeah, That's fine. All the same Keep, time. So Saquon, Saquon and Nico for Tank Dell and Bijan. I'll take the Bijan side. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. First yeah. and a second for Saquon. That's probably a good return if you can sell Saquon. You're rebuilding. Right. So you know what you're seeing here is a good a good return for Saquon on a lot of these trades. So the market seems decent, and it, it, every league's different. And you're gonna hit us in the comments. I can't get that for Saquon. I got it. But oh, it, give me in these leagues. These are real trades, and they really happen. Um, and, and you know, I, you know, like I said, we're, we're arguing back and forth about the Barkley, Rashad white, Brian Thomas, but it's, if that's I, a, that's a good trade, but that's, that's on, a good trade. If I, if I want to take a stand on one side and you want to take a stand on the other side, it's exactly how I, dynasty trade. The way works. I see that trade is that those teams to me are different direction teams. So this is also before two days ago, before, before Brian, Brian Thomas, Thomas had, a, good had game. a nice game, Drake London and Noah Brown for Cortland Sutton and, and. Saquon Barkley, so Drake London being best part of that deal. I so mean, that's, that was three basically days ago. just that's a third round pick for your fourth round pick. If if Saquon was going to fourth round, which I wasn't buying him in the fourth round, that's the first problem. And then Cortland's like a maybe 11, that was a you problem. Round. If Saquon's crushing it for the next three years, not not a problem. Yeah, that's you're right. Saquon puts well. up CMC yeah. numbers, and you got him in the fourth round. You'd take that all for the next three years. You would for take sure, that. absolutely. Or Jay. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, keep it moving. All right. All right. Next guy, Jamison Williams. You know, he was he was we were alluding Woo. to him a little earlier. Jay said, you know, time in the sun, big winner, Jamison Williams. Time in the sun uh for Drake London has expired. Well, people said the same thing about Jamison Williams. His his value was never as high as Drake London's, but Jamison Williams time in the sun had evaporated, and there was so many people out there who said he's dead. Uh, and it's the same people who probably said Nico Collins was dead. These are the same people who never get any of these guys when they're good values and they just sit around. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Um, they, they can't get they're all Jamison Williams was on everybody's fade list this year. He was on everybody's stay away from list. The first thing I said in the off season, the first podcast that we did back when we did the first mock, we were going through it. And Jay said, what do you like? Or, 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 or you know, what value to like here, big co. And you said something. And I was like, Jamison Williams in the 10th round. Really? Cause that was my first mock and I didn't know. And so for this year for in the startup value. And so Jamison Williams in the 10th round was wild. And there were still people on that value saying, don't take them. Uh, good for the Lions, you know, the decent win last night. Uh, yeah. So good for the Lions. And if, when he's when he's running crossing routes, and I, I said this to you yesterday, so I don't mind saying it again, but somebody there was, somebody tweeted like him running qu- qu- crossing routes out of a condensed formation is going to be a problem. When Jamison Williams is running a crossing route and you got to be looking at Sam Laporta, mm-hmm. Jameer Gibbs, and Amonra St. Brown as weapons, that's not good. That's yeah. that's a problem well, for you. That's a problem for the defense. When you look at the next, you can go to next gen and you can go to the charts of all the routes that he ran, and they're the, all of them are. Ba- it's either down the field or Smart. all of them, and some way or the other are having. And that's what you need to be doing with Jamison Williams that's, right now. And oh that's my why god, bit, the separation that he got on that touchdown. It looked like he was in college. There, there, the guy mm-hmm. was nowhere near him. He yeah. put him on skates that double move. Can you throw that? Uh, percent the snap target percentage back up there um so williams was nine targets five receptions 121 yards a touchdown one carry 13 yards uh, but right here we're looking at the top 10 uh target shares of uh week one here and jameson williams is coming in at four with 32.1 oh. um, and a 0.32 targets per route run so bound to regress both really good numbers certainly bound to regress because i'm in russ st brown is is going to uh, you know, probably gets get some grease this week, right? You know, we're not going to see that same thing from St. Brown. But, you know, there isn't really a two. There's there's Laporta, but there's really no two here. And if they're willing to take the deep shots here and there with Jamison Williams and willing to do kind of what we saw out of him, this, again, this offense isn't going to be, this is going to be a 30-point-a-game offense in a lot of weeks. Oh, sure. not, not what we just saw this past week from playing another good Rams team on your home opener. And, and you know, Jamison Williams is just the story of a guy who this is dynasty, man. This is this is you get rewarded for patience. I know nobody wants to have it and, and, and stick into your guns. But, you know, Jamison Williams was electric in college. He just hadn't had an opportunity to come in and be electric. And he had some maturing to do. And and he did it. And we started talking about it at the end of last season. And those are the kind of building blocks that you want to see. You started seeing him do the little things, blocking, getting downfield maximum effort to get downfield and finish a block to help spring a teammate and just buying in. And then we just, we heard a rumbling all off season, Jared Goff loving him, Campbell loving him. He, he's bought into what's going on and, and rewarded week one, uh, almost For a sure. big of a statement from the lions of saying, Hey, we're, we're, we're giving this guy we're, we're, everything we were telling you here. It is good luck guarding him. Right. Now, next week, we're about to go back to work. Now that you know, this is a possibility. We're about to go back to work with St. Brown. Yeah, I like that. Well said. I think every time Dan Campbell got in front of the microphone, I had somebody ask him about a surprising player or this or that, and it was his answer to all those were were was Jamison Williams. And I like that a part about it. It's like, all right, well, we've got this Ferrari. We want to show it off, and then we'll come back next week. Now that you guys have to know that that dimension in our offense is there, you know that we act. Jared Goff just threw the deep pass. It landed right in his hands. Touchdown. Better back up a little bit, give our guys some space. And now here comes Montgomery, Gibbs, St. Brown, and Laporta, and the best offensive line in the league. Mm. Go Lions. Yeah. Let's let's check out a couple of quick trade values. Uh, he just played last night, so I'm not sure we're going to be getting the most accurate Jamison Williams trades here, but we could we could pull some up here and see kind of what's gone down. JSN for, for J, uh, Jamison Williams. That's an interesting one. If the trade happened today, they saw him play yesterday. So, right and then that happened today. So yeah, um, somebody out on JSN because he didn't come out there and crush week one, and Jamison came out and crushed. You know, I can't, I can't be, can't be too, too mad at you. But again, have some patience with JSN. Mm. Um, but exactly, I, I'm not terribly upset about that. If Jamison Williams is going to come out and be, be a dude, then I'm not. You're getting, you're getting a guy you can play. Let's see, Devontae Adams, Jamison Williams for Drake London. So you saw Drake kind of slip up. You saw Jamison blow up. What's your thoughts on that one, Big Co? Oh, it's a great return. That's a great value increase to go and get uh, Drake London. If you're trying to win, that's a 
very tough trade to turn away from. If you can get Jameson Williams and put him in your lineup and get Devonte Adams and put him in your lineup, you know, yeah, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard no to say if you're trying to win and Drake London's got a couple more, just like I said earlier, got a couple weeks here where it could be real tough for the Falcons. And you're looking at Jamison Williams that plays in a dome with Jared Goff for the next 13 straight weeks before they have the first outside game. And Devonte Adams is going to be a target monster. That's a tough one to turn down. Probably you would think Drake London is the side there, but I'm a hard guy. I'm going I'm to have a hard time answering that correctly because Same. of my lions that I've had the lions shield that I've had on my chest since they went zero and sixteen. Yeah, if you if you've been listening to us, you know that I didn't just start liking the lions last year. So yeah, I I can be proud of the lions. All these newcomer lions fans, I get it. Twenty twenty seven first and second for Jamison Williams. What are we doing? That's way too far away for me to care. You shouldn't be able to trade twenty twenty seven picks. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, so you know, there's some action on Jamison, and some some people are going to be screaming from the mountaintop, sell, sell, sell. If you can get good value for Jamison, and and then 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 for sure sell, but I, I'm getting rewarded for my patience, and I don't want to sell. So, well, he's you know he's definitely not going to be in the 30s of target no, percentage no. of the team. Like he he but he, he can he balance be out doing and be really in the 20s. Well. It now, if he's if he's stuck at 18, 19 percent, that'd be a win. Yeah, that'd be a win. If you got one out of every five passes, and he can do with that, he can do with the ball in his hands. He'll get a couple of handoffs here and there, end the round, et cetera. Like you're not going to be able to get 23% target share with those other yeah. guys on the team. But if it's a very highly defined, if it's just those guys, like you said, they don't have another wide receiver that even uh, Khalif Raymond is a professional and right. they will lean on him if they have to in an emergency. But other than that, they don't have anybody they need to throw the ball to, yeah. you know? So we know yeah. they're going to service Brown and the tight end and the two backs. So, I mean, they're just they're not going to throw the ball a ton because they're going to be winning. Yeah, uh, and, that's the you know, that's that, the big that's the big and Jamison Williams is going to be a part of that. But they're going to be winning a lot of games. They're going to be they're going to be running the clock out at the end of a game. They're, they're going to they're going to be. I'm I'd love for them to be in a lot of shootouts because it's fun. But I think they're going to be in the fourth saw, quarter. Yeah, you saw probably trying to it. grind it out. Right, you saw him mm-hmm. lean on it last night in overtime, and Monty Monty get that win, which. Shout out to our <laughs> shout out to our boy Monty, um, and then you saw a twenty five first there for Jamison Williams. That's basically the return on your investment from a few years ago. Um, I would give I'm, it up. I'm holding. For I'm, I'm holding that. Uh, I'm good. I'm gonna keep it keep it moving for, with 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 JMO. Like you're, you're not taking the first. No, you would trade the first though to get to get J-Mo. him. Probably. I love what I saw, and I had faith in the guy. So yeah, sure. Was that a? Two 25. QB on a one QB, one QB all day, one QB. Yeah, first good call, big co. Yeah, good clarify there, Jay. Um, it's funny you won't trade him for a first, but you probably would give a first for him. That's the old I got five dollars in my pocket. You got it's a lot harder for you to get that five dollars out of my pocket than it is for you to get that five dollars <laughs> off the ground. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, what's ours is way better than what's yours. Yeah. My five dollar bill is worth way more than your five dollar bill for sure. For sure. All right. Uh, well, that's about the time we got for today. I want to do a quick run through of, of a few things just at the end here. I thought Kyron was a big winner from yesterday because um, there was so much heat of Blake Corum coming through there. Now, I even saw some people doubling down on the Twitter machine saying, oh, Kyron's so inefficient. Corum's coming. And I'm like, did you not take any context away? Well, Bo, if the Rams have three starting linemen or or some backups and not missing a backup to a backup and moving things all around. I think the Rams win that game last night and you, they shove Kyron down your throat even more. The win there was Kyron was the punt returner, even though at one point it seemed like he didn't want to be the punt returner anymore. There was three lions standing around. He just jumped on it like a grenade for no fucking reason. And I'm like, well, he didn't want to return punts. Anymore. He's, he's trying to get taken off the punt team. Um, <laughs> did Corm even play a snap? Corn. Ronnie Rivers was out there Doesn't uh, like he for, for a few snaps, finish. and then Corum was right back in there. Bo, they trust Corum. They love Cor, or they trust Kyron. They love Kyron. I'm not saying Corum's not going to wake his way onto the field and and get some run here. Kyron wasn't inefficient because Kyron was inefficient. They were inefficient because that was a good run. Blo- that was a good run front, and they had they were missing linemen. They literally talked about it the entire game. I I just I, I don't know what we're doing. That's called context of what's going on. 
Um, so that was great. We, obviously, Cooper Cup, Tyler Johnson, and 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 uh, Demarcus Robinson, probably decent pickups. J.K. Dobbins, shout out to him. Good for coming back. Yep. Uh, Mixon, big winner, great game, good fit. Jaden Reed, uh, we none of us were terribly on Jaden Reed, so winner there. Maybe a slight loser for a minute for missing. Uh, of course, they're not even ruling out uh, Love at this point. Yeah, um, but the, he should sit for a minute. Uh, looking through the snap yeah. percentages, Dubs led the wide receivers in snaps and uh, right. tied for first in targets and yards. Maybe just didn't get the touchdown. So I think it's a nice buy opportunity for Romeo Dubs. Go make that move. Yeah, um, moves to make. Rashi Rice. We talked about it over and over again. One of the easiest slate. But uh, you're welcome. You know, help Yak. you win league winner uh, clicks. You know, he's basically St. Brown Rice. Nine targets, seven receptions, 103 yards. Can't stop him on the slant, apparently. Um, no. So, you know, and then Aaron Jones, great performance. Kenny, three sticks just out there. He should have had another touchdown and got called back. But 20 carries, 103 yards, touchdown, three targets, two receptions. Looked great out there. Bell cow, love it. Uh, and then A. Rich, nine for 19, 212 yards, two TDs, six carries, 56 yards, and a touchdown. Like, you're going to have to deal with some growing pains here. And you're going to have to deal with some of it. But the fantasy points are tremendous. Um, and the things that he can do, um, if he can just not make the same mistakes over and over and over again this season and you can see some growth, I mean, this is this is just an absolute wagon of a fantasy asset. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, like more ceiling than, than Josh Allen at this point. Um, incredible. And I feel like I do a decent job helping people. So I can definitely uh, look y'all in the face and be like, yeah, I definitely was outspoken about Jaden Reed and his price tag into dynasty startups and talking about how Deshaun Watson was a really good value in the Superflex startups and both of those guys. Those are those are two bad spots on my record for week one. It doesn't feel good to be wrong on those guys. It doesn't. I mean, but Deshaun needs to get it together, and Jaden Reed looks so good. Obviously, he uh, didn't have that many catches, and he didn't have that many targets, but every time he touched the ball was looked like the, one of the best players on the field. So yeah. that didn't feel great. Um, and then, it doesn't feel great to not have any Jaden Reed, I'll tell you that. No, it does not. Uh, uh, but, you know, who knows? If, it was, if they were in there again, if, if Love was in there for this week, who knows what you would see in this week in a different setting it, it, that that was the problem but yeah Jaden Reed looked excellent looked like the kind of looked like a little bit of their Debo for 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 them and LaFleur Faster, coming from but not right, quite not as big but they they're gonna beastly. they're gonna scheme them in some of those yeah, similar that, ways at that times. scheme in general like right. if you thought Josh Jacobs wasn't gonna be good this year yeah, oh, you whole know first half washed and then 8.7 yards of carry in the second Dude, half. he still got it LaFleur is a wizard that offense is humming yeah. I mean if, if if love wasn't back we could be going bonkers right now you know if love wasn't hurt sure but. sure some some other losers obviously bryce young at panthers oh wasn't good you get the saints in a dome good defense good defensive line not your best divisional matchup week one so i'm adding dome to the drink list we can we can pump the brakes a hair but you you're concerned um olave i don't think you should be concerned javante williams i don't know that you should be terribly concerned they threw it 45 times that game that's not what they're going to be doing um jaleel's not meant to be the guy who's out there a ton um, he, he, he could be very useful, um, but I think you're, you'll be fine with your Javantes. And then E.T. was probably the biggest one that maybe was uh, people are a little scared of. 12 carries, 44 yards, a touchdown, fumbles going into the end zone. Three targets, two receptions, 15 yards. But here he played on 100% of the snaps inside the 5 and the 10. He played on 83% of the snaps inside the 20, as well as 80% of the passing down snaps for the uh, for the. Uh, I want to say Bengals for the Jaguars there. So, yeah, Tank Dell looked great. Or, uh, sorry, Tank Bigsby looked great. Right? Uh, you can't, yeah. can't take anything away from him. But I, I don't. I don't think we're going to see fifty fifty through this. And in some of the more important things, Et was still leading the categories of of kind of what we saw from um, the Jaguars there. Yeah, that was a great. Those are really good stats to to get some uh, Etn owners off back off the bridge a little bit. Those are those are great stats. Tank Bigsby still alive. Mm. Uh, that's really good for a lot of my teams. Um, didn't take long to get back to a spot where I could tip my cap and just be like, "Hey, told you to take a kicker over uh, <laughs> over uh, uh, Bryce Young." <laughs> so that was nice. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, yeah, we definitely. We don't have enough time to go in on Watson, but definitely. And then the elite tight ends, all losers, but 
just relax, man. Just relax. This is we we started off like that, and we'll end like that. The elite tight ends are going to be just fine. Kincaid is there not going to go. What's that? Yeah, I so said there you go. I mean, McFarland tweeted out that Dwayne McFarland tweeted out that uh, Trey McBride had ninety percent snaps and thirty percent targets. Right. There you, you know. You know, Kincaid's like, gonna uh, they're gonna come in there and say, hey, we can't let that happen again. We can't have a game go by with Kincaid. You know, they got punched in the mouth early. Um, you know, Laporta w- was fine. Um, Pitts caught a touchdown. They they they, they got Pittsburghed. Um, so you're, you're going to be all right. Andrews was was banged up. Kelsey, you know, I think well, Kelsey will probably be a little up and down, but Kelsey's going to be just fine. Um, and, and I don't know that you consider him one of those expensive elites anymore. Um, but yeah, you know, I, j- you're going to be okay with the tight ends moving forward. There, you know, like you said, McBride's target share was was sky high. Um, it just didn't really amount to a whole lot. So. Um, like I said, we started there. We'll end there. Relax. Everything's going to be all right. Thirty, almost a thirty percent target percentage for for McBride market share. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's most likely going to be just fine uh, for those guys. So let's wrap it up. Big Co. Great to see you. We got the the five dollar holler. You get every every Sunday night nine o'clock. We'll be coming at you with a just an instant reaction of kind of what happened. Um, Patreon.com slash EFF Dynasty. You got the Discord with that as well. Uh, and there's all sorts of, you get access to us. There's also a free Discord you can hit up. So make sure you check all that stuff out. We appreciate you guys. If you listen on the podcast, go check out the YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. Got lots of graphics and cool things to look at while you're watching the show. Appreciate y'all for listening. Catch you next time. Peace.